was that whole deal earlier this week with Tyree Kill and Mahomes and all those guys on Twitter? How'd that make you feel? <laughs> it was funny. I'm not on social media, so, I mean, it was my teammates showing me, and we were at a training table, and it popped up on ESPN, but it's pretty cool to to be preceded by a guy like Mahomes. I mean, probably going to go down as one of the greats, so um, it's cool, but, you know, honestly, our focus right now is to you know, work on, work on our team and, and keep getting better in camp. So, um, you know, I don't want to get distracted from what we're here to do. Yeah, with all that outside noise and attention, how do you keep yourself centered and grounded? Yeah, well, first my faith. Um, you know, I wake up every morning and get in my devotion. And, you know, you just set your day off right. And, um, you know, you, you protect yourself from the world. And then I have great parents that, that have raised me correctly um, and just, you know, have taught me the way of, you know, how to act and how to, to be around people and keep the distractions out and, um, you know, to have an uncle and, you know, my sister now working here um, to, to have family in the building is, is also, you know, a very comforting feeling to have, you know, them alongside. In terms of your on-field progress, I mean, how have you felt going into the fall? Was it different for you than, than going into spring when everything was maybe a little bit newer? Absolutely. I mean, the spring was kind of just everything brand new. And then, you know, now having, you know, a full spring under you, a full summer under you, you know, you go into camp, you feel a lot more confident. Um, I, I think our whole room has felt more confident. You know, Danny, Heinrich, Jalen, Bodie, all the guys that, you know, have been preparing and, and getting ready for this. So, um, yeah, we've been preparing a lot better. And, you know, it just it makes it easier for us. Go ahead. What have the coaches talked to you about, not just you, but all the quarterbacks, about limiting turnovers and not making – bad decisions that put the ball at risk? I mean, that's that's our you know, focus from January, honestly. Um, you can't win games if you turn the ball over. And I think, you know, a lot of people have been through that and, and seen it. So, um, you know, the new guys just, just know that we're not going to turn the ball over and, you know, we're going to put points up on the board. Flip side of the coin, I mean, you, you've got a strong arm. You know, you know what you can do with it. So how do you walk that line between making a throw that maybe not many people can make, but you can, but also not putting the ball at risk? Like, how do you mm -hmm. figure out when you're going to try to make a play and when you're going to just check it down? Um, I, I think that's something that, that's like a, a gut feeling, honestly, um, or a situational feeling. It just depends what, you know, you got to have confidence to throw, throw those throws, but you also have to know the situation and what you're trying to accomplish in, in that play, um, in the situation of the game. So. It's being aggressive and, and cutting it loose, but it's also being smart and you know knowing, understanding the situation of the game. Where, where do you think your game has gotten better since you arrived here, you know, the last eight months? I think I've grown a lot in protections, you know, with my uncle. I mean, he works with all the quarterbacks, but you know, just getting a little extra with them in on, on protections. Um, I also think you know, Coach Thomas has made a big you know, turnovers. Um, we're, we're trying to eliminate all the turnovers and, and make every routine play that we can have, you know, make it routine. And if we can do that, you know, put ourselves in a position to, to win every football game this year, um, you know, that's, that's, a lot, that's what people came here to, to do at Nebraska. How have you been, how, how have you been in, ter in that regard, limiting turnovers just in personal? Um, I mean, I, I feel like I've done a good job of it. Um, never want to say a great job because there's always something that happens. Whether it's a tip ball, like how can I how can I figure out how to get hit, get the ball lower so he can catch it. Um, center quarterback exchange every day is that's a focal point. I mean, if if we want to we want to run the ball and and do all those things, we got to be able to secure snaps in the center, catch snaps in the gun, and um, so yeah, I think as a unit we've done a great job of turnovers. Um, personally, I think we've done I've done a good job. Yeah. Feelings early here in camp about the receivers that you're working with and, and the tight ends too, the guys you're going to be throwing the ball to. Yeah, I think we have a special core, a special group. Um, it's, you know, it's on a, a foundation of trust and and work. You know, we came in January not really knowing what the room was going to look like. Um, you know, obviously adding Jamal and Isaiah, but um, 
I mean, you add and you put a lot of new guys in the room together. It doesn't really matter how much talent. You got to come together and you got to work. So I'm really confident where we're at right now as a group. Um, tight ends have done a great job, not only catching the ball, but you know they understand they got to block and do those kind of things. And and getting our backs more involved has has been good. You know they they um, not only run the ball, but they're threats to catch the ball. So we we've developed a bunch of trust and a bunch of work. So it's been exciting. I know it's early, but what has Jalen added to your room since? Um, Jalen. I mean, the one thing that comes to mind is speed. To, oh, Jalen Gramstad? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, well, I mean, first off, he comes in the room. He's a great person. You you see him, and he's always got a smile on his face. I don't think he has one ounce of sad or whatever in him. You know, he's, he's just been a, a joy to be around in the room and great addition. Um, you know, on the football side, he's played a lot of football. So, you know, learning from him, learning from his experiences, no matter where he played, he played in college and, you know, player of the year and all that. Um, so it, it'd, be, it'd be not smart of me and the rest of our room not to learn from him. So um, it's, just, it's just been a great addition, and, and he's been, you know, awesome to be around. Dylan, when you were growing up, did you kind of want to be just like Mahomes, kind of how you played and, you know, the equipment and all that kind of stuff? Uh, not really, you know. I think a lot of people think I try to be just like him, but honestly, I grew up, I played baseball, never liked football. Um, as a kid, I always wore glasses. Um, I've had this haircut since sixth, seventh grade, maybe, and I didn't really know about Mahomes then. And I mean, I, I had my own little kick to it. So I mean, it's not completely like him, but I guess if that's what people want to say, it's. I mean, that guy's one of the best, so I, it's cool. But um, I just try to do my, my mimic my game after you know, myself, but it also, if you're trying to get to where you want to get to, you have to see and know what it takes to get there. And I think he's done done more than enough to see what it takes. And um, so, it, I mean, it's just learning and learning football, but yeah, just try to try to do my thing and um, hair, I guess, looks like it. You were number 15 because of because of him or is, is there some, some other significance behind that? No, I wore 15 when I was my my first year of football. Actually, Tim Tebow, I, um, you know, strong Christian person, played football, you know, in Florida, and uh, I mean, I just I I look up to to people that have good character and you know are good at their good person, and he was that guy at the time. I kind of went away from it. I went to one, and then. You know, I, I just, it felt better to be in 15. Honestly, at Buford, a funny story, KJ Bolden wore number one. And when I transferred there, we were trying to work something out, like, can I get one and blah, 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 whatever. And then it kind of just worked out to be 15. And I just started wearing it. It just, you know, I felt like it fitted me. And I mean, it's, it's a cool number, I think. Have you and Malachi figured out what you're going to do with you both? Um, we haven't had our single digit whatever, so that's his plan. But I mean, we'll figure that out when the time comes. But yeah, we haven't figured it out yet. Hey, Dylan, uh, Glenn Thomas was up here, and I'm pretty sure he said that you know you're not afraid to go up to a receiver if he runs a wrong route and like tell him and correct him. Same thing with like a protection call with Ben Scott, who's mm -hmm. a lot older than you. Is that easy for you, or is that like, can you just talk about the development of you wanting things to be right out there, even if it's coming? For a guy that's maybe older than you and more experienced? Yeah, I think, you know, that, that comes honestly from mat drills and those things like earning their trust, working hard, and, you know, you, you can't, if I just walked in here day one and ripped them and whatever, there would be no, nothing would happen, right? So it, it just came from, you know, working hard together, going through the hard stuff, and now that, you know, kind of have their trust, it's like, okay, he's not getting on me just to get on me, but, you know, he fixes it and gets it right. We celebrate that. You know, it's not just I'm going to rip you, I'm going to rip you, and there's no love being shown. Like, everybody knows in the building, if you get ripped, we're going to build you right back up. And if you if you correct it and make it right, we're going to celebrate that because that's a big deal to us. How do you manage the expectations going into uh, – um, I don't really pay attention to expectations. I just focus on everything I can do in, you know, today and what I can control. Um I think our team is going to be really good this year, but you know we we just got to keep working on getting better every day. I know it's cliche to say, but 
um, that's honestly our focal point. Like we can't, we can't get to August 31st right now. Like there's a process and there's there's steps that have to be taken, and so we're we're just super invested in that right now. And you know, nothing's really going to screw us off of that. What do you think about the competition? I mean, it, it, that's going to be what the outside is looking at. Like people want to know who's going to start. Uh, do, you, do you is it is that present in your mind? No, I think every day it's just go out and compete. Um, our room has has grown and since the spring and you know we've gotten closer than you know we've ever been so um i mean obviously everyone in the, on the team knows it's a competition and i mean if you came and watch practice where everyone's it's not like okay i'm hoping or heinrich's hoping someone messes up like we're helping each other we're trying to get the team better before we put ourselves first so i mean that's just that's part of being a quarterback you, you put your team before yourself but I mean, it, the time will come when, when it's time to name a starting quarterback. But as of right now, we're we're not. We're just worried about our team and, and what we can do to get better. How do you like dorm life, and who's your roommate? Dorm life's great. Um, everybody's around each other. My roommate's Elliot Brown. So having an older guy, he's seen everything, been through good, the bad, whatever. So it's it's been it's been cool. What have you seen out of the running back competition? No, our backs go at it every day. Not with each other, just you know, they're they're grinding, they're competing, and you know, I, I think they do a great job of of handling the competition. Uh, I know, I know they all have different traits that that they're good at, you know. So um, it's kind of just figuring out which one we want to you know use in certain spots. So they've done a great job handling that, and and, and you know, they all look really good. Does Gabe feel like does he look kind of full speed? Yeah, Gabe looks really good. He's he's back healthy. Uh, it, it's just good to see him out there. What's it like having the family dynamic every day with your sister here and your uncle? I mean, you guys have some family moments mm -hmm. with the three of you guys. Yeah, yeah. It, it's cool to have. Um, I think the spring game, the first touchdown I threw, you know, I got to hug my uncle, probably one of the first people that was over there. So, um, you know, it's giving me chills right now. But, you know, just to have family here, growing up, that's all I had. That's all I ever knew. So, um you know, why change what I have? You know, I have, you know, an opportunity in front of me. Why, you know, change what I have? So having him is great. But, you know, like sister close to me, you know, live together and, you know, her dog lives with us. It's it's special. You know, both my siblings, we have a special bond um, and I would have traded for the world. So it it's just comforting to, you know, look to the sideline, you know, see my uncle there. I mean, my sister comes to every practice. So. Um, you know, joke, nudger, whatever, you know, it's, it's family. So it's, it's very comforting. Thank you. Thank you.